Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. This is still Sunday, April 11th, and it's now 4.43 p.m. You know, on my channel, when I started it and was a little ways on into it, I kind of, I made a promise to myself and to God also as I was speaking this out way back when I first started after maybe a few videos or so because of the manner in which the Lord was giving me these messages to correct what the church was teaching wrong. I knew he had called me to be, to put out the truth. And I'm really sorry that some people can't handle it or don't believe it. Those that don't probably are gone anyway, but what I've taught over the years, things about the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the spirit, and spiritual warfare, and that Christians have demons and need to be delivered. A lot of folks, they're brought up in churches that do not believe these things. They think the gifts of the Holy Spirit died out with the apostles. Nonsense. Why would Jesus tell the apostles to go in the upper room and wait for the comforter? Only to take him away after they all died? Seriously? And then what about the other, let's see, there were 12 apostles. They had picked another one, so there were 12 again. The other 120 people, so that's, um, I, ha I have such, I can't do brain, uh, math in my brain. It's 108. That's right. They all got it, too. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so, they aren't the ap apostolic gifts, as some churches like to call it. Okay, now that's just one example of things I have been given messages from the Lord to correct. Uh, and there have been others. Remember the dream about division and how the church started out huge, a huge group of people, and we were like on a hike, and we didn't go very far until the road forked, and half went one way and half went another, and on and on it went until the group I was in had to choose which way they wanted to go, and when... The dream, by the time the dream was over, there were three or four of us left on our little narrow path, and the dream ended. I didn't, haven't gotten many dreams from the Lord, but I remember that one. I know that one was from the Lord, and see, that's just telling us how through the years, the church that started out in Jerusalem as the apostles and then Paul took the gospel and made a large, together, if they had been together in one building, it would have been a very large group of people. Okay, so let me move on from that to today. Where are we today? In a, in a, some could say, oh, things are awesome today. We are the most blessed generation. We have these huge Smart TVs. I got Alexa to turn my lights off and on. I got this chair. All I got to do is push this button and the legs will go up. And push this button and it'll massage. Push this one and it'll add heat. Oh, man. we've got. I got a refrigerator that'll pour water. Ice cubes. Crushed ice. I mean... Our poor moms and dads, they didn't have all that. Oh, what about the century before them? See what I'm saying? You could look at it that way. But you could look at it this way. This is the most evil that 
well, I know that there's nothing new under the sun, it says, I believe in Ecclesiastes. I think Solomon wrote that. There's nothing new under the sun. It's a very depressing book. But he's trying to get a point across. Way back then, no matter what you do, all is evil. All is for naught. It's all going to burn up. You're going to die. And then who's going to get your stuff? It's kind of how he put it. I worked so hard for all this and all that. And it's all for nothing. Well, he was having a pity party when he wrote that, I believe. But anyway, the Lord used it for good. All right. Now here we are. Some don't have it so good. But still, probably better than those folks like Ma and Pa and Laura and Mary on Little House on the Prairie, which was a true story, by the way, that Laura Ingalls did marry a man named Wilder. She became a school teacher and wrote books. Those books by Laura Ingalls Wilder, they made a TV show series, and I loved it. And if I could get it somehow on this computer for free, <laughs> I would watch it. Seriously, now and then I'd let myself watch that just for a break, you know, away from all this stuff that we who are awake, we know the Lord, we know the truth, and we're awake. We also have the joy of the Lord, though. We have heaven to look forward to, don't we? And we're seeing our loved ones losing their salvation. Okay, so that's just an example of why maybe this is not the best. It, it can be the best. This is the generation that will see the rapture. Not just one, but two. We're also going to see World War III after the first rapture. Some people think the World War III is all about the jab. Well, I kind of tend to agree, but yet I think it's going to be for real war. But I'm getting all off subject here. I'm saying all this to say I found another little bit of truth that I want to share with you that our sister Aubrey, I'm giving you kudos, Aubrey. You said no one wanted to hear you or believe you when God told you don't take the tests. Well, I just put up a video on BitChute, so I'm not going to say anything more about it, but I wish you would go watch it. And I'm asking myself, if anybody remembers, I was going to have eye surgery. Some people donated some money so I could afford it. And instead, I ended up going to three different eye doctors because I was so afraid to take that test. I was just afraid of it. I'd heard they go up so high and someone had cerebral spinal fluid dripping out of their nose and and I begged that when I ended up having to have it done because of my heart okay I got I gotta go back to to get to that okay the thought of having the test because of what I had heard and because Aubrey and some others had said God said don't take it just, I heard it from her and another one. I couldn't tell you who. So I was like, oh, I'm, I'm just not going to have it. I will get a pair of glasses. They will, they will have to do. And so I took that money. I went to first two experts on um, cataracts. And the second one I went to, I explained to him, I do not want cataract surgery. Not yet. Because I thought, we're going to go any time now. We're going to go outside of time. You know, be raptured. Get our glorified bodies. Come back and help others. 
get ready for the second rapture. That's what I thought. Well, here, we're still here. Okay, but at the time, I just didn't want to have that test. So I ended up going to getting the glasses with the second guy's prescription, which was totally wrong. And why did my computer just black out? 4.54? You know, I used to... 4.54. 4.54. I got to write it down. I don't know if that was a message or not. God speaks to us in all kind of ways. Anyway, I want to end this here and say go to the link below and see what I found out about the tests. Okay? Now, so I avoided the test from, from the eye surgery. And then I... The fear of it must have started the heart problem because um, I don't know. It was a few weeks later and I wasn't having any trouble. Then all of a sudden I started getting tachycardia and I laid here all day praying, Lord, bring it down. Please bring it down. I was taking my medicine for it. And it was still in the 150s. It would not go down. When I stood up, it got worse. And I called Kathy. She prayed for me. And it, it didn't come down. I ended up calling 911. And somehow I was on the phone with her when they got here. I don't remember all that. But I just remember the medics got here and she had called their elder and he was trying to talk me out of going and saying the Lord will heal you. And I thought I've been praying all day with faith, believing it. It didn't happen. I said, I'm sorry. I mean, you know, disrespect. And I hung up and I went on to the hospital and they had to do one of them rapid tests so I could get admitted. And then I didn't get admitted. And then I had to have another one so I could be admitted the next week. So I'm like, Lord, what, what do I do now? I just want y'all to learn the truth. That's all. So that's all I have to say about that. I'm, I'll keep praying about it. What's done is done. And I know it's not the same as the vaccine. I know that. There's no way one cc of fluid can be inserted on the tip of a dry swab. But something may have been. That's all I have to say. God bless each and every single one of you. Avoid it if you can. If you can't, plead the blood of Jesus over what you'll learn in this video. Okay? Talk to you later. God bless each and every one of you. I do plead the blood of Jesus over this video, over each and every one of us, our devices, and our internet connections. And with that, I will say bye for now. Talk to you later.